From the groundbreaking topic of the season, VO3, yeah. most trending topic on every popular platform, to one of the most popular VFX plugins, Mocha 2025, integrating with Filmora, 8K editing support, and more. Today's episode is just a top pick of major updates from Filmora 14.6 up to Filmora 14.10. I mean, almost Filmora 15. For the total control of your motion graphics animations, Filmora added the anchor point, the feature we didn't know we needed so much. Well, to make it easy to understand for you, this refers to a process whereby you select a particular portion in your frame, or on your element or whatever that you may be animating, and that particular portion may remain constant while the rest of the frame is animating. For example, I have this image right here, and I would like to make a swing of this guy here. And as you can see, the anchor point dot is right here on the scene, as you can see. Now you can move it to the top area right here like this. And now, when I animate the rotation like this way here, I will add a keyframe right here. Change the rotation. For as long as I do not change the anchor point values, I am going to have a nice swing here. And that's the beauty of it, thanks to the anchor point feature. Let's move on. Talking of the popular features, Filmora just upgraded the VO3 output quality from 720 HD to full HD 1080. Well, I think let's talk about this update in this way. Filmora already had the imaged video generator. But hey, the game leveled up completely when VO3 stepped on the scene. In the previous versions, when you go on the stock media right here, you will see the imaged video feature with the custom generation options or the video templates that you could choose from a vast of inspirations. But while we are still there on the custom, now when you go to this option right here, you can see there is an option for you to do all the work through Google VO3. As you can see right here, it may look like there are no much changes here, but trust me, VO3 is a beast in this game. Well, I got a very important tip about this whole thing, so bear with me a little while. Now, if you really want, it's up to you. You can actually build a successful YouTube channel using this feature. And the tip I have for you guys is how do you create long clips, consistent clips? Because when you go on to the settings right here, you find out that it's only 8 seconds long. Each generation is only 8 seconds long. All right. So I have my little prompt right here, which I'm going to write. Subscribe to Filmora Mastery for Feastables. And now, when you have this, how do you make it to the next scene with consistency? Well, the thing is, just bring that created video in your timeline, and then go to the last frame and capture a screenshot. That means you are going to upload this image as your reference or starting frame for the next generation. Guys, this feature is dope. If you are really serious and consistent, you can actually create three videos of about two minutes long every day, and that is going to increase your chances of going viral. But also, bear in mind that each generation will require a hundred AI credits, but you can make a budget. Well, well, well. Now let's move on to the best feature on all these combined updates. I think what I'm trying to say is no AI credits required. And this is all about Mocha 2025, integrated with Filmora to give you results like this. Oh, you're gonna love it. This feature basically is a tracking beast that allows you to take complex areas or portions in your video frame and then add particular effects or element on that tracked area. It gives you features like plane tracking, quick masking, and power mesh tracking to provide accurate tracking data. And now, here is how exactly you use it. Drag down your footage into the timeline. 
And now you go to the Effects tab, and then down here, you see the Boris effect. You're going to see the Mocha Filmora. If you haven't downloaded it yet, you can follow the procedure to download it, because it's just as direct as that. Right now, you have to go to the Effects Properties, and here, go to this option right here to open the footage that you want to track on your main subject. And then you select this option right here to launch the Mocha UI. And while you're here, you can see this. That might look like confusing a little bit, but I walk you through it. It's so simple. The first thing is, you can change the interface. For example, the classic, the big picture, or the roto. But for the best experience, you go to the classic interface. And right on top here, you're going to see some features like marquee selection and lasso selection, the picking tool, the point selection tool, the pen tool, the zoom tool, and this one that you're seeing right here is the manual spine tool, as you can see here. And this one is the magnetic spine tool. And this one is the brush rectangular circle. And these that you're seeing right here are the tools for the tracking mesh, the planner, the plane surface tracking. Now the thing here is, Whenever you select a spine selection, it will automatically add a layer right on the left side of the preview screen. Now for this particular example, I'd like you to use the manual magnetic tool here and select on your subject the area that you would like to do the tracking, like in this way here. And as you can see right here, layer two has been added. Now down here, just below the preview screen, you must select the perspective in mesh options right here. And then the small motion in this allows you to get a more precise selection or tracking. Now for you to start tracking the surface, press this option right here. And the tracking process is going to start. And now in case there's a little bit of a mistake on the tracking, you can just select multiple of that area and then adjust them. And now if you want to preview this selection or the tracking, just play and you see how good it is. And now let's move on to the time that you need to insert. You go again just below the preview screen. As you can see, there are sections right here. There's a clip section, lens, tracking, which is the one that we've been doing, and then the trick adjustment. And then now you need to go to the insert option here so that we can start the inserting process. And right down here under the background clip, select the import. And then right here on the insert clip, you can choose the insert layer. And that is going to activate that element that we imported or we selected earlier when we were still in Wondershare. Right here from the preview screen, you can at least adjust your element if you want to. And for more customizations, down here again, you can change the blend mode. And this definitely depends on the type of element in the type of your main video. For me, I choose overlay, then adjust the opacity. Right here under the feather, I will adjust the feather then move on to the transform. And right here, of course, you can adjust the position, the rotation, and the scale, shear, and perspective. And once you have done that, my dear friend, you're almost done. You can just select this option right here, which is the save data, and then you can close the Mocha user interface. Right here in the main project, in Filmora, you're not going to see anything right here. But on the effects properties, if you expand the module renders, you can turn on the render. And there it starts showing up. Down here, you can actually adjust the blending opacity the way you like. And now this is how it shows up. And that's exactly what you need to know about Mocha Filmora, at least for now. By the way, a little break. If you have some main features that you think Filmora is supposed to add in the upcoming Filmora 15, please write those in the comments section. The more people who talks about a certain particular feature, the more the chances that Filmora team will consider those features in Filmora 15. But let's move on. In the previous versions of Filmora, for you to apply the glow effect on your titles, you will have to right select your title in the timeline and then create a command clip. And then after that, you will have to search for the glow effect on the effects settings on the effects tab and then drag it down on your command clip to create a glow text effect. Well, that subject is now optional because you now have the primary option before converting your title in a command clip. On the text properties right here, you can see there are a lot of features and there's now the glow option here. When you turn it on, as you can see, your text starts glowing. 
and there are a lot of options right here to allow your creative control. You can change the glow type from here, the glowing edges and the glowing ray. You can play around with the intensity, the range, the horizontal and the vertical angle only applies when you choose the ray effect. And honestly, this is great. But a little disclaimer right here, guys. You still need to use the effects because like in this case right here, you cannot keyframe this glow effect. But when you do it through the command clip strategy, you'll be able to control of your glow through keyframes. But right now, we don't have keyframes to attend to our glow. Let's move on. Well, I know you were so pissed off because every time you tried to remove the focus from your audio, you were only limited to 60 seconds. But guess what? You don't have that struggle anymore. When you right select your video right here and use this vocal remover option here, it can now separate the vocals from the instrument up to one hour long audio. How cool is that? Well, I don't have the one hour long audio just for now, but this is almost five minutes. Let's put it to the test. There you go. That was a good upgrade of the eye focal removing feature. And let's move on. Did you know that Filmora can now support the 8K editing? That's great. But I know, I know, trust me. I know that you're going to say when you go to project settings right here, there is no option for 8K resolution. Like, for example, right here. When you go to the resolution right here, here you do not see the 8K resolution aspect ratio. Well, you can only come to the custom right here and then enter your custom aspect ratio. And for long as it's within 8K range, you will be good. And I know some of you may think that 4096 by 2160 is 8K, but that's a topic for another day. There you go. And now talking of the high crazy bass resolution effects, the AI video quality enhancer feature just got upgraded. Well, the video enhancer is upgraded on the device processing capabilities. It now has unlimited time and the performance improvement. But now it's currently only limited to certain graphics, which means there's a GPU problem right here. Well, the feature is still great. While we are still on the AI tools, it's my pleasure to announce to you that Filmora's Lens Correction feature now supports the GoPro Hero up to Vision 11. Well, if you don't use the action cameras to shoot your footage, this may sound useless, but trust me, it is useful. When you go to the Lens Correction right here, you see on the device model, here you see the GoPro Hero up to Vision 11. And once you've selected your profile right here, you can select the resolution and then adjust the level. And this is really useful. And I think you would like the update too. And now let's move on. Filmora now has the 48,000 Hertz audio support. When you go to your project setting right down here, you can change this option right here from 44 to 48 Hertz. And when you're exporting your audio, you can also set it to 48 Hertz. And that is upgrading the sample rate for a better quality of your audio exports. And now fellas, besides all those upgrades, Filmora added some improvements on the existing features. For example, the AI audio creation, AI image creation, the smart object remover, and a lot more. You can explore those on your own. The main target of this video was to talk about the main peaks in the combined updates. And by those words I mean, we have come to the end of this video, my dear friend. And if you have enjoyed it, leave a like and share the content. Until I meet you in the next episode, peace.